So during this workshop on failed states and weak governance, we dealt with different issues regarding globalization. First one is mass migration, uh, capital flight, but also the corruption. A weak state is a state which is unable or unwilling to provide uh, common goods, socio-political goods, uh, due to institutional weaknesses. Now, these goods are crucial, such as uh, education, health, institutions, infrastructures, good governance, crucial to, to transform economic growth, GDP, let's say, into uh, sustainable and inclusive development. Uh, the price to pay by the population when you have a weak or worse failed state is uh, poverty, uh, social unrest, corruption, uh, and maybe political upheaval. What you, you have today is a crisis of social mediations, what I call buffers, buffers between the population and so-called elites. And increasingly, with the COVID-19 crisis, these elites have lost legitimacy, have lost uh, credibility. And you just need to look, for example, at the turnaround in voting, uh, which is increasingly towards what I call the 50s, which means, you know, in 1960s, 1970s, people wake up in the morning and went to vote. You know, we had 80s, 90% sometimes, you know, a voting turnaround. Today, you have 50%. Not only in uh, developing countries, you know, but also in developed countries. That's also a consequence of the COVID-19 crisis, the global pandemic, is that you have, in fact, a blurred divide between developing and developed countries. Uh, before, maybe until the 1990s, uh, it, it was clear, developing countries were catching up gradually, you know, but they were marked by a monopoly of social vi violence, uh, military uh, interventions, what I call the autocratization, you know, larger number of autocrats. Well, today, this trend of autocratization, diminishing democratization, uh, can be observed on both sides, you know, developed and developing countries. It is true that the consequences, you know, practically speaking, of uh, failed or weak states are probably twofold, uh, brain drain and capital flight. Capital is flying and people are flying also. And this, of course, tends to, to impoverish countries. When you have brain drain, when you have capital flight, basically that impedes development. It cuts uh, investment, it, it increases the gap between savings and investment. And we, we use capital flight as a measure, as an early warning uh, signal and measure of, uh, of failed states. Uh, in order to bring money back home, you know, uh, you need more than a decree or a law, you need trust, confidence. That's precisely what is missing, including in countries such as Tunisia, the Maghreb, is in fact the credibility, the legitimacy of uh, national elites. And that's a challenge for a country like Tunisia, which was at the forefront of the uh, Arab Spring, of the Jasmine Revolution. Yes, you have now a democratic system, uh, you have uh, accountability, let's say, but you don't have trust uh, between the population and the national elites. That's a missing element, again, to transform economic growth, that's easy to do, into sustainable and inclusive uh, development. Today, we had an executive workshop about the concept of failed states and state fragility, and it was really interesting to learn about the different indicators and societal causes that lead eventually to the disruption of a to a failed state or to a systemic collapse. And we had a really, really interesting and insightful lecture, introduction lecture of Mr. Boucher in the beginning. And that was then also topped by an, a, a lecture from somebody from Transparency International who especially pointed out this corruption aspect from a very multidisciplinary perspective. And so it was very insightful and I'm looking forward to the second half of it. There's definitely a huge need for the expansion of civil society and trying to create more political dialogue 
uh, include more yeah, citizens into decision-making processes, probably even bring it also to, to schools, you know, try to use all the channels that you have at your governance toolkit, basically, to communicate with people and uh, have some outreach. Of course, there also needs to be a more stronger focus on the international level uh, for the work that's done there, for the achievements that have been made and of course also pointing out more precise examples and where corruption everywhere can take place because it's not something that is just somewhere on the other side of the globe but also something that is big and hidden mostly to the public eye also very much into well what we consider more like the developed world or the you know advanced industrialized society. The, the COVID-19 crisis has accelerated a trend which was in fact existing since the mid-1990s, which is a trend which can be called uh, secular stagnation, which is a decline in growth. But not only that, also a decline in democracy. And the COVID-19 crisis since uh, 2020 uh, has presented an unprecedented rollback in democracy and good governance. Uh, and this uh, has deeply rooted uh, causes, including uh, the income and wealth gap growing since the mid 1990s, but also uh, illiteracy, poverty, uh, declining life expectancy. You have 12 countries in the world where life expectancy is below 60 years, and a large and growing number of countries where life expectancy is declining. So, in fact, just uh, in a nutshell, you have a number of rich countries with poor people. And why do you have rich countries with poor people? Because in fact, uh, failed state is some, well, sometimes you know, uh, not caused by external uh, shocks, such as a virus, a war, ethnic tensions, you name it, but in fact, by poor governance. And the price again to be paid by the population is poverty, deeply rooted poverty. Well, it will not come from the, the top of the hierarchy, of course, because the elites are there to maintain their, po their power, including their autocratic power. Uh, if there is a, a solution, it will come obviously from the bottom of the, of the national uh, pyramid, which means the population. And it's interesting to see in this, uh, this workshop, um, it, it brings together you know, a wide range of, uh, of origins, uh, ethnic, uh, national, uh, geographic, uh, professional, and that's, that's the wealth that, that the, the CIF program you know, is bringing, is putting people together and sharing their, their thoughts, their approaches, you know, and that can lead to better consciousness of the, of the challenges. I think that when the CIF students get back home in their home countries, uh, they bring not only knowledge, but they bring also uh, demand and an exigence, if you will. Huh? And I think that can pave the way uh, toward a gradual improvement in governance.